so it was um, it was a good uh, good marriage <laughs> some issues because of what you mentioned but uh, <laughs> and um oh, so i think i covered everything so madasha antardasha um i was just checking from perspective of jaimini that mm-hmm. mercury is holding the least degrees i guess in this chart mm-hmm. and mercury is ah saturn was also transiting over mercury yes in scorpio yeah so again yes. uh, darakarka and um, and because her dara karaka is in the navamsha lagna mm-hmm. as soon as she gets married she will have lot of inner transformation she will mm-hmm. suddenly develop interest in writing <laughs> communication talking speaking to people her friend circle will increase suddenly these things will happen mm-hmm. and that will uh, change her uh, direction in life that will happen after marriage so yeah it did happen a bit her friend circle definitely increased because oh, she oh nice and it is exalted it's very nice very beautiful placement this is and also since ketu uh, it was aspecting her 7th house but ketu was also transiting so she actually moved uh, to a different country so she moved away from her uh, mother so it was like bhavad bhavam so fourth from fourth so ketu like it separated her from her current um, home and uh, family so another reason why i have seen is when ketu transits seventh house they get married mm-hmm. of course when rahu transits that can always happen yeah but when ketu transits then also it happens do you know why mm-hmm. even if there is no link with all these factors which you are saying mm-hmm. because the person feels completely headless about marriage true <laughs> then the person is like okay i found somebody yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> but when rahu is there the person is like hell bent on choosing the that uh, tom cruise or the ashwarya rai something like that yeah because the person has too many options when rahu transits the seventh house rahu yeah brings it's like explosion of op- options yeah that's why it's considered terrible that transit of rahu in seventh house mm. because now somebody will say that oh it's good in the 10th house why is it not good in the 7th house the transit mm-hmm. well because anything new in marriage is not very much <laughs> conducive <laughs> but in career something new you do that will always be good for you i mean not necessarily always depending on the dasha but not very great for the 7th house <laughs> and the problem goes is that k2 transits your first house so your intelligence is like there's no head there's no head yeah that's and then you are like okay maybe if i stay with somebody else i will be happy in life so so these kind of things happen when rahu k2 transits in no so 17 axis so then yeah. the person becomes too much obsessed <laughs> I actually I had another chart like they actually found the life partner when there was a solar eclipse going on so again rahu ketu was in uh, rahu was in cancer ketu was in capricorn and there was the solar like this solar eclipse in july july or something so, yeah uh, so it's yes. like complete transformation of their life because of their life partner like a new uh, like partner was introduced and complete transformation of their life yes and i was just wondering if uh, by any means sun mercury saturn or ketu are involved in finding the spouse i was just wondering <laughs> mm-hmm. so when uh, they got married in rahu venus you said right yeah so uh, did this proposal come during rahu ketu period uh which is no the proposal came in 2017 okay and um it was uh, 2017 it was uh, july 2017 okay so you are saying that mercury ketu and saturn were in no ways involved in finding the spouse no saturn was involved No, I am saying the dasha, the antar dasha time. I am saying they were yeah, not. Yeah, antar dasha like there were um, nothing materialized into marriage though. That's the thing. Okay. Nothing materialized into marriage. 
Yeah, because this is one of the rules. Uh, recently, when I was in Guwahati in my home, mm-hmm. I had met my uh, <laughs> chemistry teacher from my 11th and 12th. <laughs> so he had once messaged me uh, in my Facebook that, hey, my eighth house has got active now. <laughs> so then I was like, after eight years, you know, you see a message like that, that my eighth house is active. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? And then suddenly I realized that he has seen my videos. And this time when I went, uh, we had a talk for around mm-hmm. for six hours around near about that time. Mm-hmm. And then I was testing with him that any planet which is in the 12th house from Venus, mm-hmm. that can give you the uh, physical display of the spouse. And we were testing in his his case. And there's another teacher who used to teach chemistry. <laughs> and we were testing in his chart also and some other people. And that, that was working. So that is why I was asking. Either Mars, which is the seventh lord, uh, sorry, 12th lord from Venus. Mm-hmm. Or Saturn, Mercury, Sun. Or maybe they were involved in the Pratyantar Dasha. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Could have been. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and the Ashtakvarga score. This is the Ashtakvarga table for them. And yeah, one caution I would like to give. The numbers which you are seeing here are not the houses. Okay. Yeah. They are the signs. So if you are a Cancer Lagna, when you are seeing four, which is in the, uh, this number four, sign number, that is your first house. Okay. Yeah. So there you will see 34 points. Don't look at your fourth house. That's true. Yeah. Unless you are Aries Lagna, of course. It's easier. Everything's easier. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's mentioned sign number, but there are people who write in the comments. I've seen in Ashtak Varga videos. Oh, in my this house, they said this many points, but how only these points? It is the sign, not the house. Okay, I'm saying again, be careful. And so in this one, so if we look at this uh, particular person's chart, uh, their seventh house is 10, number 10. Uh, and then Jupiter is giving them highest points and Venus is giving them uh, highest points. So anything above four is good. So above four is only these two planets. So Venus actually gave them marriage and Jupiter was aspecting their seventh house to um, transit. So again, you need to see, just check whatever is giving you the highest score. That will be the planet that will determine like your exact, the Mahadasha, Antardasha timing of your marriage. And then this is an example of a very early marriage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this person got married like 19, uh, around 19 years. Their marriage got finalized. So very, very early marriage. So for, for this person, um, their seventh house is uh, Venus, which is sitting in the ninth house. And again, Venus is sitting with Rahu. So again, Rahu, like if, if it's involved in any of the seventh houses matters, it will just give you that restlessness, like you said, right? Like obsession to get married. So they got married in uh, Moon Mahadasha and Venus Antardasha. Okay. So again, Moon is the dispositor of their seventh lord. Moon is the dispositor of their seventh lord. And funnily enough, both Jupiter and Saturn were sitting in their seventh house in Taurus when they got married. Mm-hmm. So this is what double transit that I was talking about. Both were in the same house. And um, and again, for this person, um, again, Ketu is aspecting their seventh house. Ketu was sitting in their second house. Mm. At, at the time of their marriage, Ketu was sitting in their seventh, uh, second house during their uh, marriage. And um, Jupiter, Saturn was in their seventh house. And um, Venus uh, was somewhere. Venus was, I think it was transiting over itself. Mm-hmm. Venus returned. Yeah, Venus returned. <laughs> So very like, I've rarely seen like uh, charts where it's like super early marriage. And if you see in Navmansha, uh, Mars is sitting in its own uh, sign and Moon is um, aspecting. So again, I've noticed in many cases, Mars and Moon 
also like this person is also like Mars is aspecting the seventh house. But sometimes I've noticed that Mars um, gives you also like Rahu. It makes you like do everything in a hurry. Like uh, whenever Mars is involved in seventh house matters, it, unless like uh, Saturn is not involved in the Lagna chart, but it makes you do everything in a hurry. <coughs> so Mars and Moon, like those are the two planets which can... Um, they are the ones that can give you like very early marriage. Moon, Mars, Rahu. They can give you early marriage. Uh, Jupiter, if it's involved in seventh house, Jupiter will give you a uh, marriage on time. Uh, Ketu, Saturn, those planets are the ones which I've, and Saturn most of the times. And Ketu, basically, it doesn't want you, like basically it, it takes away that uh, fantasy enjoyment. And even Saturn does that. Um, and even I've noticed in some charts, uh, especially for guys, if Saturn is not uh, involved with the seventh floor, but Saturn is involved with Venus, Saturn is in conjunction with Venus, that delays marriage. Or if Venus is sitting in the nakshatra ruled by Saturn, or Venus is sitting in like uh, some sign ruled by Saturn, Capricorn, Aquarius. So again, that is also um, main uh, significant for delay. And... So this is the Ashtak Varga score for um, that uh, person. So again, Jupiter is giving six points. Saturn is giving three. Now for Saturn, it's like, it's very, it doesn't give you high score that easily in most of the, I don't know if you have noticed in Ashtak Varga, it usually like high score, it's really, really good. It rarely gives that high score compared to the other planets. So for this person could have been, so there are, Four, like there are all uh, they have 32 which is a really 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 good score so again like 32 is a very high score for marriage so basically all planets are working together to get them married like if you if you know what i mean so everything uh, is like basically only moon and saturn is anyway very strict about giving points so other than moon and saturn if you notice every planet is giving them good points yes so they could have even been married before 19, but 19 was the first time that came and they got married at that time. So now I'll talk about some remedies. So there are many issues that people are facing, like you said, in-laws, um, uh, like they're like, the guy is not, um, the wedding just get canceled at last, uh, at last minute. Or the girl is not uh, finalizing the proposal. The guy is not finalizing the proposal. The parents are not happy or the in-laws are not happy. Or there are some other factors that are involved. So some remedies for that, I would say. And this is based on my personal experience and what other people have done. So one is food donation. To human, like I say, service to humanity, service to God. Like serve anyone, serve animals. You will see the results. So like you can uh, donate food, like whichever planet, if you're having trouble with Saturn, donate food on Saturdays. If you're having trouble uh, with Venus, donate food on Fridays. To animals, to people, to homeless shelters, to needy people. This is one of the very important thing I feel personally is food donation. Respecting your elders. Always I feel you should, um, especially if uh, there's some, cases where you know like there's a conflict right between uh, parents and children like always respect your parents just have that respect for your parents to avoid any kind of conflicts and this is the thing like plant a basil tulsi plant and water it every day guy or a girl just have a tulsi plant and water it every day and you will see in some time like you will just feel that mental peace and you will be able to make the right decision you will be able to take the correct decision and at the end of it, I would like to say, it's like have faith on God. Like you say, God is always there with us. So on top of all these remedies, if you know, like just have the final say is God's say. So just have faith in God and chant mantras. Like you said, um, always, that is always really good. So those are the remedies. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, could you just uh, go back to the second example, which you just shared? Sure. Early marriage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting chart. <laughs> so 
so is this person uh, by any means in foreign now no 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 they are in india oh they are in india and they are from india only yeah yeah no it's very good for them to stay in india <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, if they go to foreign then mars might create some issues because it is holding some say because it's in the seventh house of d9 yeah so it is highly recommended for them to stay where they are staying and have they changed any state or anything like that they changed residences once i mean uh, like from bombay to chennai or chennai yes. to kolkata yes. or something they did they did, they did. okay and uh, what else can i ask who is the dharakaraka in this chart is it oh sun is the dharakaraka okay sun is the dharakaraka and where is sun It's sun sitting is... in the 11th house aha uh -huh. okay i was trying to check the upapada where is the upapada coming so upapada is coming in the sign of capricorn okay k2 is there okay nice ketu is in upapada that's a very nice placement actually for getting married to it can happen that uh the ancestors of this is the chart chart of a girl right yeah yeah so it can happen that the ancestors of her husband mm -hmm. or the parents they could be uh, linked with one of the traditions in india traditions means one of the spiritual paramparas mm -hmm. it it can happen if of course we have to check the degrees also degree ke liye ketu yes degree ke liye also it is in the upapada mm -hmm. not bad nice <laughs> nice chart yeah and uh, the lord of the upapada is in the ninth from there which is also very good and it is sitting in the dana karaga so that enforces marriage mm -hmm. and it is with mercury which is also exalted yes there are many factors actually you see another factor is seventh lord is in the ninth house seventh lord in in trines because they say whatever is in trines they are blessed by god yeah luck improved after marriage for them okay they they just grow in status and everything after marriage yes that is also true and uh, what else can i say it's a nice chart mercury is in 10th of d9 that is fantastic wow great chart it's a great blessing to have a planet in the 10th house of d9 <laughs> benefic of course <laughs> that's true nice chart very nice chart by mars hmm? so aspected by mars which is in its own sign yeah mars is aspecting and i'm also very happy to see this venus jupiter conjunction which is in the 9th house 9th house yeah and jupiter is dominating the conjunction because it is in own sign mm -hmm. and uh, in the lagna it is in 10th house okay very nice very nice chart yeah <laughs> <laughs> well fantastic it was <laughs> thank you very much you have any other announcements to make or anything specific you are planning to do in your channel or anything else you want to share <laughs> i'm planning on uh, doing like uh, something like live and then answering questions once in the near future so i'll do that too i will also prepare my questions <laughs> sure sure and um, how many what kind of videos you have in your channel now So I started from basics. So I didn't make it into like this was the most complicated uh, presentation, uh, like the topic that I did. But I just started with basic, you know, like uh, what is sun sign, what is moon sign, what is your rising sign, like you know. Um, then I did like what kind of spouse you'll get, uh, how to improve confidence, you know, like which planet is responsible for what, what is the karaka. So I was uh, I was making the series on that, like which planet is karaka for what. 
so something like that but uh, in like general i specialize in like marriage astrology i've done so much re- research in like marriage and like timing of marriage what kind of spouse like all those things so that is like my main uh, thing that uh, it, like i will also make like videos on marriage like but right now i'm focusing on like the what kind qualities uh, will you have in your spouse like your future spouse if you are unmarried Yeah. Yes, and Venus is currently retrograde, and uh, two days back I made a video, and then <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very sure this video will also go wild. <laughs> like that video, I think by the time I upload it, it will be one week, and we there will still be I think four or five days of <laughs> Venus being retrograde. So I am very sure it it will come out in a good time. Okay, so you can stop the screen share, I guess now. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And whoever has liked this video, you can click the thumbs up and share it it with somebody who is asking you that. Please tell me when will I get married? <laughs> or if you want to check yourself, that also you can do. And you can visit her channel. You can subscribe, and you can see those videos on sun sign, moon sign. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for coming. It was an amazing session. Okay. We will get soon together again some new topic maybe. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. See you. Bye. See you.